Hello and welcome to another review video for Mr. Phillips' science class. This is Mr. Phillips, your science teacher. The purpose of this video is to review how energy is involved with chemical reactions. So let's get right to the information and go over what you need to know. Um, chemistry studies matter and what matter is made of and what matter, how matter changes. Physics tends to study energy, but the two are not totally separate. Energy is involved with chemical reactions, and the purpose of this unit is for you to understand that relationship. So first of all, you need to understand that when a chemical reaction occurs, either energy is released as a product, or it is absorbed as a reactant in the reaction. And the reason for this is because sometimes the reactants have their bonds broken, and this releases a lot of energy. And sometimes, on the other hand, new compounds formed in the products require new bonds and those bonds require the use of energy and so if the new bonds take less energy to make than the old bonds then there's energy left over uh, the opposite is also true if the new bonds take more energy to make than the old bonds released then energy is absorbed in the reaction here's an example hydrogen and oxygen combine in a chemical reaction to form water this reaction releases more energy than it absorbs. So overall, it's an energy release. For example, um, in this picture, you see someone welding underwater. They're using hydrogen and oxygen. This releases a tremendous amount of energy, creating temperatures above 3,000 degrees Celsius, um, which is enough to melt metal even underwater. Um, when the heat is released overall in the reaction, that's called an exothermic reaction. Exo, like the word exit, thermic, having to do with the heat. Now, sometimes that energy, instead of being released as heat, can also be released as light or sound. And when all three of these are released at the same time, we call that reaction an explosion. And we saw several videos where heat, light, and sound were, were released very rapidly in explosions. Here are some examples of a rapid release of energy. Sometimes the energy is released slowly. Um, and we can feel that slow release as warmth. For example, uh, chemical hot packs that we use um, for treating people who are, are cold. Uh, the rusting of metal is a reaction that slowly releases heat. And so that would be felt as warmth rather than an explosion. Um, so once again, if the, uh, the bonds in the product have more energy in them than the bonds that were released in the reactants, then the energy is absorbed in that chemical reaction. So for example, in order to break apart water into hydrogen and oxygen, you need a lot more energy to break the bonds in the water than you do to make the new bonds in the products. In this case, that energy can be electricity. Electricity can be used to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. When we cook our food, um, this requires a lot of energy in the reactant side, and that's why we use things like stoves and microwaves and, and fire to cook our food, because we need a lot more energy on the reactant side than we get out of the product side. It's overall the energy is absorbed. This is an endothermic reaction if that energy being absorbed is heat. So endo, like enter, once again thermic from the, the word thermometer having to do with heat and temperature. All right, so there's a review of reaction energy. Now let's talk about reaction rate. Reaction rate is how fast a chemical reaction occurs. And there are several things that affect reaction rate. For example, temperature. The colder the environment is, the slower chemical reaction tends to occur. The opposite is also true. The warmer the environment is, the faster the reaction rate occurs. And that's because that warmth in the environment can be used as energy to make the reaction go forward. Concentration affects reaction rate. Think of a concentrated acid that's going to react much more quickly than a diluted acid or a weak acid. Um, think about which you would rather have be spilled on you, a concentrated acid or a diluted weak acid. Well, you'd want the diluted one to be spilled on you because that's going to react slower and you'll have more time to remove it from you. Surface area also affects reaction rate. Um, the uh, we, we examined in class here some grain silos that had blown up um, because the powder that was in the air 
from the grain transfer process um, had a lot of surface area. And so when that ignited from a spark or a flame, there was a tremendously fast reaction re resulting in an explosion. We also saw uh, discuss the reaction of a metal powder factory where the metal dust had an explosion that killed some workers. Inhibitors um, is the, uh, an example of that in everyday use would be preservatives that we use in food. Here we see in this picture fries at a diner being compared to French fries that have preservatives in them. You can see that the decomposition, which is a, um, a result of chemical reactions, this occurred quite quickly in the diner fries compared to the McDonald's fries. Enzymes is another one. Um, these are chemicals that are used um, in a, to affect a reaction. For example, meat tenderizer is a chemical that we use to accelerate or, or make quicker the, the decomposition of meat to make it um, more tender. Catalysts are used to speed up a reaction. This is a catalytic converter from an old car, um, and this was used to accelerate a chemical reaction that reduced pollution in the exhaust of cars. And then here we see some just some pictures of uh, some chemical reactions. Here's the Hindenburg explosion. Once again, a chemical reaction that happened very quickly with a rapid release of energy. What we haven't reviewed is we haven't talked about things that affect or things that are signs of chemical changes. And those include color changes, the formation of a gas. Um, these are in your notebooks. You can review these. Um, and so what I'd like you to do right now is uh, write down the day and time that you watch this video lesson and i'd like you to have an adult sign that as proof that you did in fact watch this complete video thank you very much and uh, after having watched this video and gotten the signature you may schedule your quiz makeup